Welcome to Light Up Essentials. This is a series of video tutorials about using Light Up. In this video, I want to focus on the tools for real time navigation in Light Up. So, here again, we've got the Light Up uh, toolbar, preferences, query tool, the tour tool button that we're going to be using to uh, enter the real time mode, and also the uh, real-time post-processing like bloom, saturation, exposure. So I've got my model that I was using before. I've only changed it by adding a uh, skybox here rather than have the uh, physical sky. Um, so if I just click on um, Tour Tool, then we uh, start. Now you'll see um, that if I drag left mouse button and move mouse left and right, it turns my camera left and right as if I'm moving my head. Um, I use the arrow keys, I move around. And there's a sort of an amount of inertia that goes with uh, that motion. So it's a very smooth, natural motion. If you're working on something uh, very detailed or, f or fine, you may want to look at preferences and click on apply, turn off apply inertia. And now you'll get something that's very sharp, has no inertia, and allows very exact positioning. Another thing you can do is to uh, turn on camera collision, and what that does is uh, it stops you walking through walls, basically. Uh, so when you're, if you fly up to a wall, it will collide and stop you. Uh, that means you just get a better experience as you're exploring your interiors. And thirdly, there's, you can see here, there's apply gravity, and that applies a downwards acceleration um, to keep you to the floor. If you do shift left button, it changes your height of your viewpoint, just like it does in SketchUp. So let's just turn this off for now. One thing you've, you've noticed is uh, we've got some camera statistics up here, and also a frame showing where this dynamic uh, light source is. So I can toggle that off by pressing F5. The second thing is, although I, if I move my camera left and right by uh, dragging, I can also hold control down and pivot around a point. So I can just choose a point and pivot around that point. So this allows me to very quickly get to um, uh, the location I want. back here. Um, while in Tortool, you can also change the uh, field of view. So if I just go to the background, hold control down, and drag down, I can change uh, the field of view. So you can see in the bottom right corner, it's given the uh, field of view degrees. Um, Without now, that's, that works exactly the same way as the SketchUp uh, function. The difference is you don't have to exit Tor Tool to get into SketchUp to make that change. And in a similar vein, uh, if I move left and right, I can move the entire backdrop uh, left and right. So, particularly if you've got a view like this, for example, you may want to just come around to get just just the viewpoint you need. Okay, so the other uh, elements of um, working within Tor Tool is, if you look over here, we've got uh, lighting only. So if I click on that, I just get the lighting without any textures, and that's useful sometimes for being able to see uh, what the rendering, what the actual lighting is doing uh, aside from textures. And also stroke, which is very similar to uh, the SketchUp uh, Profile not as sophisticated in some ways, but but it is real time. So I can change the thickness of this stroke to give a little bit of definition to my my model. So when I press F5, I get this um, visible uh, indicator of where the lights are. I can also use show photometrics, which will show me where the IES file uh, lights are, um, and show me their photometric mesh as well just for, um, to, to check that things are, are fine. Okay, 
So the other element of using Tool Tool is to um, uh, set up your field of view, set up your views. Of course, you can use SketchUp Scenes uh, to to move to pre predefined places. You can create scenes while in Tool Tool and use them to set up uh, a path through your model and um, then produce movies and write them out and be able to do that repeatedly. This last button is the um, real-time post-processing. Um, so it not only allows you to capture stills and movies, but also has this um, real-time uh, mode for changing uh, the look of um, your, your rendering. So here we've got just the basic rendering. Um, I can change its temperature. In, um, so if I make it warmer or cooler, I can change exposure, saturation, go from black and white up to a fully blown out color, uh, contrast, also bloom, so I can, I can just uh, change the bloom, I can change its cutoff point as well so that uh, I just get the parts I want to, to bloom. Real-time vignetting, of course this is all within the context of uh, the real-time mode. So uh, if I just cut down the saturation a little bit. Um, now one of the nice things with uh, LightUp is that it has these schemes which are essentially buckets of, of groups of presets. So I can set up a whole bunch of different uh, styles, sort of settings, and then compare and contrast. So I can, um, I just want to have one here, you know, touch more gamma, some strong um, vignetting, and I can just flick between these two, these two looks to, to see what, I, what I'm going to use. And those are all persisted when you save the file. So lastly, there's um, depth of field. So if I just, I'm just going to reset that scheme actually. Um, depth of field uh, means that you're just going to have um, just a portion of um, the way you're looking at. The focus point is going to be in, in, uh, in focus and other parts are going to be out of focus. So if I, uh, and that focus point is right in the center of the, of the screen. There's actually a tiny little red dot. I don't know whether, if I can get close enough, you can see it. That's the focus point. So if I bring down um, depth of field like this and uh, use the padlock to lock that, that distance, what it now means is that anything that's not at that distance, as in everything, is, is going to be blurred. So if I unlock, it auto focuses on this point. So what you can do is, is choose a point that you want to be in focus, put, place this point on, on an object, lock, and then when you look away, just this point will be in focus and this stuff will all be um, out of focus. And then if I, of course, I move away, I'm going to be completely blurred. So clicking on the lock and unlocking will bring it back into focus. Now if I widen out the depth of field to essentially infinity, it will be like a pinhole camera and everything will be uh, completely sharp.